Angela and I'll be talking today about a paper on assessing algorithmic fairness. Um, and here the central issue and the starting point of our work is the simple fact that in practice, protected attribute information is often simply not available in the data sets that you want to audit disparities on. So when does this occur? Um, a high profile example is in the financial industry. Um, where in lending, it's actually illegal to collect race information for non-mortgage loans. Um, there's also all, uh, many other situations where this is the case. Um, in health insurance records, race is often missing or imputed. Um, however, in these important application areas, it's, uh, there's, of course, it's a very important project to be able to audit simple disparities in the first place, even before we can start discussing questions of adjustment or alternative interventions, we have to be able to measure disparities in order to um, contest them. And so right now, what do regulators do? Well, the industry standard is to use proxy methods. Um, one high profile proxy method is BISG, which tries to impute proxy probabilities of race um, by demographic information from the census file. Um, so using Bayes' rule, we'll get the probability of um, race membership by zip code and surname information. Um, now, using these proxy methods um, is a bit difficult because it renders auditing claims vulnerable to the particularities of the proxy method itself. And so BISG is controversial in previous work that appeared last year at this conference. Its systematic bias was studied. Um, and there's a lot of um, kind of uh, gray literature on and a lot of academic literature studying exactly when BISG fails. Um, and so the goal of our work is to really try to characterize the boundaries of what can be concluded at all about disparities in this very common setting where we have access to an auxiliary data set. So we're not going to focus on any particular estimation method, um, we're not going to make any assumptions, and we're going to ask what are the limits of what we can say about where the disparities can be um, in this very common situation. And so we're going to model this approach by assuming that uh, the data generating process comes from a joint distribution on outcomes, y hat and y. Um, we want to preview the classification setting where y hat is some decision and y is some true outcome, a is some protected attribute, and z is auxiliary information. Now this is the joint distribution, the probability distribution that generates um, the underlying data. However, we only have access to two partial views um, of this information. We have a main data set. So in the lending example, this is the case where we have data on outcomes and auxiliary information. So we might have data on um, loan default and income. Um, and we might have access to auxiliary data set. So this is our census file. And it contains information on the kind of uh, demographic census of race by income or other characteristics. Um, and so uh, this paper is going to introduce methodology for uh, essentially trying to characterize uh, these boundaries. Um, and so how do we do this with data combination? The main idea is that take the disparity um, you want to estimate, let's consider a simple um, conditional probability of uh, the outcome y given race and rewrite it as an expectation of some kind of unknown function which depends on everything, um, but this expectation is taken over the main data set. And so why do this? Well, um, we know some things about this unknown function. And so the main idea is that conditioning on the auxiliary information allows us to estimate the uh, marginal probabilities of this unknown conditional joint distribution. Um, so in this setting, we would like access to the gray information, but we can only observe um, information from the blue and red. From one data set in blue, we can estimate um, the race of prevalences given this uh, additional conditional information. From the other data set, we can estimate outcome prevalences given uh, this auxiliary information. And so we know that this unobserved quantity um, satisfies certain constraints. It satisfies the marginal um, distributions that we can estimate from these two data sets, and it additionally satisfies some constraints that all probability distributions, uh, distributions do satisfy. Um, and so the main idea for partial identification is that we're going to simply estimate, we're going to optimize this estimate of the unobserved disparity over the range of all the constraints that we can obtain from the data that we do have access to. Um, and so, so far what I've mentioned is relatively classical, um, there are for Shea Hofting bounds, and this is quite closely related to copula theory, and um, a lot of, uh, there are analytical approaches that handle this um, in the setting uh, with, without um, additional conditional information. 
Um, and so I'll just summarize some of the additional analysis that appears in the paper. So the main challenges um, occur when you try to introduce additional complexity to the, to the problem. Um, so if you want to assess classification type disparities or conditional disparities, essentially the challenge is that this is going to introduce some optimization variable in the denominator, and then for computational reasons, um, you may not be able to attain analytical closed form bounds. Um, but the other dimension of complexity that you can start to think about is assessing disparities, um, not just for binary attributes, um, but for multi-valued attributes. Um, or adding additional modeling restrictions, and these will in turn introduce additional computational complexities. Um, and so I'll introduce a case study of what these kinds of sets of possible disparities look like um, in the medical setting. And so we have a data set of warfarin dosing for diabetes. <laughs> Warfarin is an anticoagulant. Um, there was a lot of interest, there is a lot of interest in um, personalized warfarin dosing. And in a paper released by um, the Warfarin Dosing Consortium, they actually remarked that they found some racial disparities in um, the resulting dosage. Um, and so we're going to consider a classification task about assigning the, uh, a high dosage for warfarin or not. Um, and we're going to use this full information data set and generate two partial views. So simply take um, the proxy column, so we're going to consider um, current medications, uh, certain genetic biomarkers, and their combinations um, to generate the auxiliary data set, um, and take the outcomes for each individual and this auxiliary information and generate a main data set. And we're going to try to recover the partially identified set um, using this approach uh, for multi-valued um, disparities. And so the relaxation that we consider for multi-valued um, disparities um, in general considers any linear combination of weighting on attributes. But if you would prefer to simply think about um, worst case one versus all contrast, you can simply think about the kind of rectangular um, whole of these sets. And so the main idea is that um, you can now um, establish the range of uh, the partial identification region um, and essentially without making further assumptions um, on the data generating process or using additional information, this is uh, the only guarantee you can make about um, where the underlying disparity um, is actually really. And any choice of any particular estimation method is going to introduce its own assumptions and commit to a, a certain point estimate. Um, but this is the uh, limits of what can be concluded without making further assumptions. And so the main idea is that, of course, with this approach, it's very agnostic. We're not making any additional assumptions. And of course, these sets may be too large to be um, informative. But if these sets are indeed small, what we can do is we can rule out the absence of disparity uh, despite using these proxy-based approaches. Um, and so to conclude, um, the overall goal of this work is to characterize the fundamental limits of what can be concluded um, about, the, uh, about the strength of disparities using data combination. Um, and of course, the project of auditing disparities is incredibly important, um, but the use of proxy methods should be uh, cautious in understanding the kind of fundamental ambiguity of the problem. Thank you.